This is the moment right here. plunging side works perfectly, the high angle side works perfectly. I'll be gentle with the CV so they don't just fall out. Yep. <laughs> so the lightweight one, that means I hold this side. Okay, so can I just hold those? I actually feel really good about that. Oh. <laughs> well, this is just a quick test fit. That's how that side looks. It's already coming together. These baby bolts. No. <laughs> Outer CV joint. I'll spin the wheel to get that lined up. Oh. This is the very first look at a carbon fiber axle in this car. In theory, we could turn the tire and we could see the uh, differential spin. Oh, yes. That's the real deal right there. For as big as I thought they were going to be, that's actually pretty low profile. I think we should just bite the bullet and try the two-piece drive shaft. Just uh, let's go for the, the hardest part in the whole car. And this one's definitely going to take, take all three of us yeah. to do. This is the last piece to the puzzle that's not on there now. This one should go... I'll go ahead and feed the back part in, which should be something like this. Okay, well, we'll just put this up there for now. I'm just gonna gently set that down right there. A lot smaller than I was expecting. Even though it looks, it looks big in your hands. That's the same thing I say. <laughs> this is an aesthetic goal, and it's also just kind of a functional aesthetic, is that the whole front piece is square to the, you know, vehicle and then the rear part is what made up the angle it's gonna go to somewhere like that if i could stay right here show you how this is kind of going down so i have more room over here because i can't do anything about that that's actually going to go up a bit just pick up the end and yeah see see angling this one down adds angle to that what i'm going to do is just a real quick the measurement shit oh yeah go ahead and it's it's the rear one it's this tube so right now that says two degrees. Mm -hmm. This one should be closer to, yeah, close to level. That's negative two right now, but we're still kind of in the six degree. We're still within that. I mean, nothing about this looks scares me at all. Okay, that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I just need a, a professional. Yeah, thing. exactly. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, everything I've read says. Uh... If you're not driving at 10,000, 20,000 miles. Yeah, that's the other side to it. These are the last CV joints needed for this drivetrain. These are fixed. CV joints, meaning they don't plunge in and out, which gives them the angle to turn. Act right. Okay, well, these are fixed, fixed CV joints. <laughs> there we go. There. They aren't popping out yet. Oh, so the plunging is like the bonus feature. Yeah, okay. they're newer. This is an older style. It's like flipping around. Oh, oh yeah, outside, outside. Yeah. Hopefully these bolts work for this. Yeah. And the reason we can't put, really put the boots on is because we don't have the bolt correct bolt pattern for those. This would now go on the longer side, like, like that. I don't know why drivetrain stuff is just so fascinating to me. Wonderful. Yes. That is, oh, oh my God. I can breathe easy because I was thinking that, that was like a please. Because the first thing I realized was those CVs are thinner. Isaiah, I'm gonna angle the GoPro up to you. Go ahead, hit it. I can feel the plunging working too. That's cool. Okay, and then the re here's the magical moment, turning it the other way. This is when you can block the other way, right? Yep. Oh, it clears, it clears. So the plunging side works perfectly. The high angle side works perfectly. You're currently the most important hand model in the world right now. Hold it there for another hour. Oh my God, dude, that is so awesome. I've been dreaming about this for four years. Carbon, does it, does it have the same uh, brittleness versus strength sort of thing where the more strong, the stronger it gets? No, no not necessarily. Uh, you could actually get uh, the, the next level of carbon up 
um, has a higher stiffness and a higher tensile strength. And then the one beyond that is a higher stiffness, but uh, an equivalent tensile strength to this. It's like picking your Mario Kart character, yeah. acceleration versus top yeah. speed. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the most beautiful things ever. My role is to clean up these flanges and these flanges because we're going to be putting RTV and sealing them in, right? That, that's the yep. step I wasn't aware of. It's more important on drive shafts, less important on axles, just due to speed, the grease will Oh, fly out. yeah, okay, yeah, centripetal. So. centripetal. Yep. <laughs> RTV time. Just on the inside ceiling surface. It must be easier to just dispense right from the thing. Oh, 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 I went too far too quick. Maybe. I would not have thought to do this. That's one thing that's weird about this car is ignorance is bliss. If you came in, like, handed me these, I'd be like, I know nothing about these, these are magic. And now I'm like, oh my god, I understand more about these. But then I'm also like, oh, I see how they work. I wonder if this, and I wonder if that. Oh, you already put the snap ring on, I forgot. Yep. Okay, so we're ready to pack it with grease. Yeah. Then I would RTV the outside of this, or well, the, the, yep. the cup. Either one. Do you have a grease gun? I do not. Uh... Spatula. Oops. Naturally, it's going to want to go to the outside. So I'm going to clean off the excess here. I got this RTV'd up. Don't confuse this gray colored material with that. That's grease and this is RTV. I'm going to put this onto here, the crown jewel. I'm going to make it as even as possible as I bring these up. We'll put some more torque under these bolts, but before I do that, there's the plunging in action. I've been doing a decent amount of work on this car, but I'm so busy trying to capture footage and be a YouTuber that I think some of you uh, think that I'm just paying everybody to work on it. I am. <laughs> there are very competent people that are better than me at a lot of things. This is a CNC drill press. Those are the wheel uprights behind the wheel hub, behind the wheel. This is what the wheel holds onto on the car. The issue is that these bolts stick out like that. When you put all of the CV joints and everything on, they run into this. So I need to countersink, meaning that I need to push the bolt head through that hole. I've done that on this one, and I didn't want to film it yet because I didn't want to mess up and then have you guys all judge me. There you go. If you put the bolt through there, it sinks right in perfectly. That's what I'm gonna do here. I have the right size drill bit that fits perfectly. And then I set this up. This is basically like a depth gauge. And so once you figure out, hey, you know what? There, I wanna go the depth of the head of the bolt that much further. This has two little rings. You spin them, wedge them together so they stay. And you center the bolt, make sure it works. And then let's send it on home. bolted down on both sides on the same axis, so that way it doesn't tilt. We need it vertical and we need it centered. I give this one a slightly more shallow head because a drill bit is slightly angled. We can now bolt up all of our drivetrain beautifully. While I'm working on the wheel hubs, Isaiah is finishing up making the brackets for the oil coolers. One of the things I'm doing right now is making sure the bolts actually line up to the center of the holes because there is a little bit of play when you go to bolt them all three into the wheel hub. You're gonna see on this side, there is a little bit of slop there and it's tight on this side, but still perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt all these down, put both the rears in, and then let's see how the rear, and then let's see how the rear suspension looks with carbon fiber axles. Test it, make sure that the thing rotates. Ooh, that's a good sign, nothing's catching. To the ends of the bolts right there, those were hitting the bolt heads here. We're gonna get this bottom bolt in without de-threading anything. These rears are 70-75, so they're meant more for threading in. Let's see this. Oh, that's very promising. The rear wheels aren't like the R32. They don't have rear wheel steering, but they do tow in and out with this tow bar here. Awesome. I completed, I don't, oh my God, I don't even know what you would call this. One whole wheel assembly. The only thing I've not put on there is the axle nut because I might need to take these off in the near future. 
And there is horsepower translated from the engine to the ground. I, I didn't have it in all the way, so I pushed that all the way in. Now, there we go. Uh-oh. I struggled to just turn it off and look. Oh, no. Do you have another torch? Always. For those of you that under, don't uh, know what this is, this torch gets really hot. I have, mine's air-cooled, but I have the attachment to do a water cooling system. He's actually got water running through here to cool down. Things still get freaky. While Isaiah's dealing with uh, that, I have just milled this out. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Isaiah asked me if he could film me. I said no. The legal reasons is a joke. I just put that into a drill press for just, for just a humorous reason. It just happened to be that. <laughs> this piece, I went off of these lines right here. Those aren't the correct lines because this piece makes sense. It's you know, a nice curved piece there. And so this was, this was machined to those lines. So I had to cut that much material plus off. I can finally mount the rear brake calipers to the back of the car. I was almost done. As you saw, I buttoned this up, but then I realized, wait a second, might as well finish the whole rear axle. Oh, look at that. That's pretty sick, right? Right, that's pretty, pretty awesome. But wait, there's more. Step on it. You want me to step on it? You know what? It's missing something though. What's it missing? It's missing all the coolers. Like all of them are coolers, but then when I thought about it, I was like, you're right, they are. I like it. I like it. Unfortunately, uh, for any of you guys that see this at SEMA, that is the result of the water just shooting everywhere. One of the very interesting things that you'll notice here is that the bar is in front of the oil cooler. That is actually a good thing. The oil cooler is so damn big. The 99 spec headlight is higher than that bar, so that nothing can go up there anyway. I was hoping this would work. I took rough measurements, but they actually go up and fit directly over and fit on there just like this. We have to deal with the fact that there's that arch in the bumper. Well, you're going to see part of this for now, but it's going to get a little wider. But I figured people would make fun of us if we had air gap here. So look at that. That's a nice angle. The carbon fiber will sweep around this for the air duct perfectly. What I'm being told is that one of them can run this car. This leaves us with options for anything. We could make it two. We could use this as a secondary radiator. Fuck it, we'll use it as a bonus intercooler. Might as well have two intercoolers. What's about to happen is about maybe a couple hours of planning to get the front tubing perfected. We also need to make a second front crash bar, the top part that really takes the majority of the force from the wind hitting it head on. It's like the center of the bumper. Close okay, eyes. close my eyes. You saw how it got brighter? Yes. Well, you don't I see my, it. I had my class. eyes closed. <laughs> you this is the first time I've seen this on here. I have the brake pads in there too, so this will be really accurate. <laughs> you get to share the very first view of the entire rear suspension all together. That is mesmerizing. It's got like kind of a grasshopper look to it. Almost up, out, out. And finally, brake calipers and rotors. That's a sight you've never seen on this car. And until today, I had neither. You can just see this whole thing coming together so quickly. We've got a lot to work on tomorrow. The main bearing for the front drive shaft, some of the tubing up here, mounting the front diff and fixing the front cover. Now that's even bigger gear, dropping this engine, putting the new one in, making the exhaust manifold, which is gonna be beautiful, making the intercooler piping, fixing the way the steering works so that way it doesn't interfere with the CV joint, running all the coolers, running all those lines. There's just so much left to do and I love it. We got basically eight days left and we're getting a full crew together to just hammer it all out. I don't think it'll be much longer until I'm sitting right there and I turn that key over for the very first time.